Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I am Gene Morano. Our guests today are both the president and CEOs for two major nonprofits based in Roanoke, but with a regional influence, Abby Hamilton with United Way of Roanoke Valley and Annette Lewis with TAP, Total Action for Progress, lifting families out of poverty, job training, connecting people to the services they need, even getting them off the streets will be topics of discussion. Ladies, thanks for joining us today. Thank so you for having me. Um, let's just get right off the start. I want to talk about um, early childhood education, mm. strong starts. Uh, what, you know, what make, so much of what makes families successful is getting off to a good start. Mm. Head Start, for example. Mm. Annette, talk about Head Start. Certainly. I mean, TAP has had Head Start since its beginnings 56 years ago. We started with about 100 children. We serve over 1,000 children mm. now. Uh, TAP is in 11 jurisdictions. Head Start is operating in 18 centers. Uh, we partner with 11 other child care centers in the community. So we're just very pleased to help uh, children get a head start, uh, get prepared for kindergarten, and that's what we focus on. We do early childhood uh, education starting at infants and toddlers because we have a early Head Start program. We work with pregnant mothers to help them prepare for the child that's coming into their lives and uh, just to, to get ready for uh, the future of their child beginning in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And if, they don't, if you don't get a good head start, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about smart beginnings sure. too, um, you don't get a good head start, you're not really fired up about education, Mm. The proof of the pudding is going to come out 18, 20 years later when you don't, Correct. you can't find a good job, you can't yes. support your family. Correct. There's all kinds of issues. Talk about smart beginnings, United Way. Well, TAP and Head Start have been longtime partners, along with PBS, if, um, in starting the work here in the region around really bringing all the partners together to have a stake around making sure that kids are successful. Mm. And so the the, the intent is how do we work together as partners mm -hmm. to increase the number of children that are accessing quality care and how do we equip families to support that growth and development so that they are ready to succeed in school and in life. Without duplicating services. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And I know one thing, I was watching a video when I was researching this, a uh, mixed delivery where you basically you have to take all these mm -hmm. different funding sources mm. and you have to go through that too, I would imagine, Annette. Yes, uh, correctly. Um, Certainly, we, we operate based upon uh, federal, state, local, United Way funds, mm -hmm. and uh, mixed delivery gives us an opportunity in the community to have Head Start at a center, uh, private pay uh, mm -hmm. person at the uh, family at the center, as well as public school, mm -hmm. uh, a VPI student in one setting. Mm -hmm. So, mixed funding, mix uh, services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's the smart beginnings going? I know I was at a thing a couple years ago when you announced it, but how's that going? And has it, do you see it making a difference in getting kids early childhood education? Yeah, I, I'm so excited because I think we've now been doing this for a long time, like over 10 years in mm -hmm. partnership with TAP and other partners in mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. And I think at the last count, we probably were impacting about 6,000 young children mm. um, in the entire region. And I'm thinking about that, I'm like, wow, that is, that's pretty incredible. And then working with over 200 um, early childhood providers, including Head Starts, public school systems, and private child mm -hmm. care, and even home-based. So I think in terms of reach, it's going really, really well. And I think the, the advantage too is that there have been a lot, there's been a lot of movement that has allowed us to partner with the state in mm -hmm. terms of informing what the strategy is to expand such a, such, um, a structure. And so uh, I know at the state level, the intent is to cover in the entire Commonwealth with um, a structure that allows children and families to be served better, and it's gonna be called Ready Regions. Okay, it will be money, will there be funds involved in that? Or? Definitely, so the intent is for us to be more efficient with all the funding that's, hap that's, that's becoming available, so state funding will flow through that, and then there will be Ready Infrastructure with partners already in place to kind mm -hmm. of implement that and make maximize it. Right, and I know for both of you, uh, like Annette, um, Return on investment is a big thing. W w donors want to really see that. Yeah. Sponsors really want to see that. Now they want to see metrics, things like that, correct? Right. 
Correct. Uh, one of the things about TAP, several years ago, we um, had a uh, economic impact study done by the Allegheny uh, Board of uh, Allegheny Commission, and TAP, because of its services that it renders and the dollars that we bring into the community, uh, really have an economic impact of about thirty-eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Certainly, it is a great investment mm -hmm. in our community, helping people get on their feet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, complete their education, go on and be successful in life, and become taxpayers. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's really, that's, and that, this is a business show, yeah. but that, that's really the, that's part of the end game on this, is yes. that if you, get, if you have a good education early on, you're, you're motivated in school, you're thinking about what you want to do for the future, mm -hmm. You go to school or you get a trade or something and you get a job. Yes. And then you don't wind up needing services from TAP or United Way as much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that Abby on, uh, it, it's a mission statement on the United Way of Roanoke Valley website, states that we strive to elevate 10,000 families to self-sufficiency by 2030. How, how, how are you doing on that goal? That's hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't attest, happen, happen like overnight. Life, life. And then exactly. how, how do you measure that too? A, mm -hmm. Well, I think what we've been doing is looking at pre-indicators, right, of self-sufficiency. How are people's status in terms of their employment? Are, are the foundations for a stable life present? You know, are children getting quality care? Um, are kids showing up ready in school? Are they graduating? And then what are their health outcomes? So it's all like a, a conglomeration of all of these different things that we look at mm -hmm. um, that kind of contribute to overall self-sufficiency and stability in a family. And so we're, we're very lucky as a community that, that we don't have to measure that alone and that there are things that we do as a community like community health assessments that happen every three years. And right. we have national data like um, the county health rankings that we can also rely on. But at the same time, measuring those same things at a local level so that as a program or as partners, we can measure our progress as you well. You really have to look at all this at a holistic level. Definitely, yeah. Health, education, yes. living conditions, mm -hmm. things like that, yeah. Um, What's, uh, we've been sort of talking about this, but what is the key to breaking the cycle of, of poverty, un unlocking unleashed potential in people? Isn't that an economic as well as a humanitarian goal? Mm. Mm. What's yeah, the I key? Think, you know, I think for TAP, it's opportunities. Yeah. It's having access to opportunities. Mm. You know, I believe that everyone has a support system. Everybody, we, you know, we don't come here making it mm. on our own. We have our family as a support system. We have the community as a support system in some ways. So TAP have, offers those opportunities for a, uh, a, a system helping people to help themselves. Mm. Uh, very, very important. Do you keep track of people that have, gone, that have gotten TAP services and that are their success stories? Along, you know, all along the way? And yeah, you've been around most, for like 50 years, so. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Uh, as I stated, we are working with a thousand children mm -hmm. uh, every year. So we are preparing infants to toddlers to three and four year olds on to kindergarten. So we track that annually. We're helping uh, young people, um, you know, uh, gain a career, um, even going to college if they prefer to go to college. We have a first generation college access program where we provide workshops and what have you for over 100 children each year, preparing them for the next step in life. Uh, we do job placement, job training. So we, you, we capture all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of job training programs, even some for ex-offenders returning to mm -hmm. society. Correct. I'm just wondering over the past year with COVID, you know, as we go to taping here, the, the job situation is crazy. You know, there's all kinds of job openings, but people quitting jobs in record numbers. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you have to tweak the programs that you offer based on what the, the community needs. Well, we are ways take a look at what the job opportunities are as we think about what training will pr provide. For instance, customer service is a, a given. Mm -hmm. Every employer needs someone who could provide quality customer service. So that's an offering that we have. Mm -hmm. But the healthcare field is one of the, the greatest opportunities for jobs. And so we provide training in 
entry level positions, um, as well as some of the individuals we have trained that may have been a CNA, want to go on to be an RN, and so mm -hmm. we've graduated them as uh, RNs as well. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you're doing. I know uh, one thing, again, I read on the website, United Way is investing in strategies that connect, connect students with the help they need to stay in school and su provide support and stability for parents trying to help get their teens to graduation day. Talk about that, that effort, and that, I would imagine, involves some of your agency partners, too. Oh, definitely, and again, TAP is primarily like one of the, the leaders in that, too, and so we recognize the strength of the partners that we have in this region. Mm -hmm. And then, I think key to the work of United Way is how do we really bring partners together, take advantage of their strengths and assets, and then use that to kind of really serve families, and meet them where they are, mm -hmm. and make them realize what their own potential is. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, we have several collaborations that are underway, including one that's led by TAP around mm -hmm. um, workforce development and employment, and mm -hmm. to on-ramp, yes. which has been going mm -hmm. on for um, at least three years now, is a partnership with TAP, with the Workforce Investment Board, and it's really reducing barriers to com mm -hmm. people completing their training. Mm -hmm. um, and so eliminating barriers like childcare, so they can't go to training or they can't start that job because they don't have, they don't right. have the ability to pay for childcare. Well, Head Start is here. Um, mm -hmm. And then, hey, I don't, I don't have the tools. I'm starting a new job, I can't afford the tools or right. safety boots. Right. Um, so kind of identifying what the, the barriers that people have and kind of meeting them with the, with, with the solution. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing the same thing for after school programs so that we can really wrap around and customize an approach for individuals and families to be successful. I'll ask you the same question. I'm just wondering over the past year or so, especially the last few months, uh, are you seeing you know, maybe some of your partners work with and say, hey, I need, I need people trained in X or Y. I need, I need people trained in specific things. You know, there's a lot of people quitting their jobs, too, mm -hmm. in food service industry. They want to move up. They want to make yes. more money. So is that meaning you have to adapt your programs? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. And I think the pandemic has given everybody an opportunity to kind of think about their own goals in life, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to weigh, you know, family, spending time with family, or, or even their own expenses. And so I think people are, have gotten smarter. They want certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, they also want sometimes flexibility. Mm -hmm. And so it really is important for us as employers to be thinking about those things. And I think about, you know, the, the ch how important childcare plays into that. And that is one industry, too, that always has a need. You know, you always need teachers, you always need folks in the classroom, yes. because unless those things are present, people can't go to their own jobs, because right. nobody's gonna take care That's of the correct. kids. So I think here's an area where we, ha we have the ability to grow and really provide a pathway, like Annette was saying, mm -hmm. where a childcare provider can earn more or learn more, as they're learning more and growing their own business. You know, childcare is expensive though, and that's another conundrum. Very. I think during the, the pandemic, people that were maybe getting that three to $600 extra, you know, that were unemployed, yes. they're like, you know what? We can live on one salary maybe, mm -hmm. at least for a while, and I like spending more time at home, and if I can get a job that works at home. So has this put workers in a better position maybe, mm. you think, going forward, where they have a little bit of leverage now? Well, I think it's still a challenge. Um, you know, child care continues to be like a national issue. Right. And it's not just the availability of child care, it's where it's located, the hours of operation, mm -hmm. and whether or not the family or the parent is comfortable in that setting. Mm -hmm. And so I think those are the kinds of things that, that are also at play here so that we can really get the economy moving. Right. Um. Let's, uh, I want to talk about the homeless issue. Mm. Uh, I know something you wanted to bring up, and, and you know, which, which also includes hundreds of school children that have been homeless. And I know United yes. Way has been working on that uh, with the city schools. How do we connect these people to the, at least the bottom rung of the ladder, a place to live, let alone get a job? Uh, mm. you know, are, are, are we making progress on that? Mm. Right. Well, you know, TAP certainly works with the homeless population. Uh, we found it. Um, during the pandemic, we needed to use more resources to, to house them, keep them off the street. So we've housed individuals in hotels while we prepare to house them in, in apartments or, or what have you. It is a challenge um, because, uh, you know, 
they need to be working. Uh, they need to, and we help with that, that training and, and, and preparing them for that. They need to be able to afford housing and what have you. And the housing community works very closely together. Mm -hmm. uh, our homeless shelters work uh, closely together. Uh, so that we can find housing for people. So we're working very, very hard at that, starting with young people. Mm -hmm. uh, we have partners in the community that are identifying locations uh, for people to uh, find housing. So uh, I think we're doing a good job at it, but you know, more can be done with more resources. Mm -hmm. It's all about resources. Mm -hmm. and you know, uh, as we go to taping, and uh, this will air after that, but Roanoke City is considering an ordinance to keep people mm -hmm. from sleeping on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And you see more of that lately, at least mm -hmm. this year, people sleeping downtown on Church Avenue or mm -hmm. camping out at, uh, yeah. at mm -hmm. River's Edge Park and all that. So, you know, is United Way and their partners, are, are you focused on that somewhat, Abby, as, as far as getting these people off the street? Because it's really an economic issue also. Yes. If these people were at close to full potential, yeah. they'd be buying stuff, they'd be yeah. renting apartments, buying houses. Yeah, and well, and it's not surprising that the pandemic has pushed people to that brink. Um, and so I think the bottom line is as a community, as businesses, as nonprofits, as local government schools, all of us in an entire community, none of us want to see homeless people on the streets or wherever, right? Not just on the streets. Right. But, but in order for us to do that, you know, there's a combination of strategies, as Annette was saying, that, that need to be in place. So making sure that we have good transitional housing, affordable housing, people having access to jobs, and the ability to really save up for the deposit that's needed yes. for those jobs. And then, hey, part of it too is like rent and re mortgage relief, right? So that people don't even get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it also bears thinking about this, right? That, that there is a, if we look at that issue as a symptom of something, mm -hmm. what is it that that problem is trying to tell us? Is it that there are eligibilities for certain programs that, that might not serve a certain population? Is it telling us that there might be a shortage in affordable housing in our community? And the answer to those questions might be all yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore our solution needs to be just as complex to address the complexity of that problem. Yeah. Does he, does it get more complex all the time as far as what you're seeing out there, as far as what yeah, people's I mean, needs I are? Certainly, uh, when we go back to what Abby was stating, what is the um, opportunity? How many um, housing opportunities exist? Safe, affordable mm -hmm. housing. And housing prices keep going up too, yes. apartment rents correct, and Correct, correct. And I think doing, um, receiving the CARES Act funds has been very helpful. We have rent and mortgage relief that's being uh, made available to people uh, with those needs and we are finding hundreds of people needing those um, resources to be able to help them stay in their housing or to get housing. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, uh, if local employers that need workers, mm -hmm. if they could do more to connect with people and the bottom rung mm -hmm. and, and to let them know there's jobs, to let them know, hey, we'll start you at $15 an hour, you show up at work every day, we'll train you. I'm just wondering if there's more that could be done and if there's been any movement in that area. Yeah, I think that's pretty much like the new economic development strategy, right? Which is growth cannot happen within an economy if we don't have a matching community development strategy right. to go along with mm -hmm. it. So I think there's really an opportunity for employers to be working alongside nonprofits and, and other partners in the community to one, making sure that we identify any barriers for employees that might keep them from showing up at work or being there consistently. And then also working closely with programs in the community so that people can progress in those, uh, in those careers and, and really see a pathway for themselves, not to stay in just one job mm -hmm. forever and ever, but really find themselves in a position of economic mobility. I'm wondering if you, um, this has popped into my head, but private industry, private employers and nonprofits, are they, are they having to work closer together? Were, were they more disconnected at one point where the private employers said, well, they do really great work, but it, how is it really impacting me? I'm just wondering if, mm -hmm. if, if, if employers are seeing that if they work more closely with nonprofits like United Way or TAP, 
they can find more workers, yeah. educated workers, more talent, that type of thing. Yeah, uh, so I, I will have to commend the Roanoke Regional Partnership when they were doing their strategic plan this year um, under the leadership of John Hull. One of the things that we had the opportunity to participate in that, and so that perspective of the human nature and human struggle in terms of employment and the barriers to that kind of came to light as part of our overall economic development strategy as a region. And then the great part too is um, the, the chambers and overall in Virginia, there is this recognition too that part of economic development, a key strategy to that is the affordability and accessibility of quality childcare. I don't think that that has happened, I mean, just in the recent Mm -hmm. recent years that mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of these movements. So we're making really good headway, um, I think, and we kind of need to kind of continue to open up these conversations too so that other issues that influence people's well-being and ability to work, like their own health and their mental health, you know, mm -hmm. can be seen by all of our um, employers and business partners mm -hmm. so that we can collectively invest in those solutions. Mm -hmm. You seeing that too with TAP? I would say so, and definitely we have job placement mm -hmm. people on staff reaching out to employers who are open to working with us to uh, hire uh, people that we have ready for placement. We have employers serving on boards which is very important, mm -hmm. uh, giving of their time, uh, understanding what the needs are and trying to partner in order to uh, you know, meet those needs. So most definitely. Mm -hmm. A couple of minutes left, I want to talk about a couple of things. One of them is uh, family stability includes using a, a banking institution. Yes. Talk about the, uh, the, the Bank on Roanoke Valley program and the, and the financial empowerment center that you've been involved with. Getting the unbanked into a institution yeah, so system. you know, financial stability kind of is a two-pronged two approach, right? So Bank On is a partnership of different financial institutions, banks and credit unions, whose intent nationally too, and here in the Roanoke Valley, to make sure that low cost or no cost bank accounts are available for people. You'd be surprised that when you don't have a bank account, you're more likely to be in trouble when emergencies happen or you have to pay more. It's more expensive when you don't have a bank account. So that's part of that partnership with the Financial Empowerment Center that's existing now to serve this region because then the Financial Empowerment Center can also provide you one-on-one -on -one coaching to kind of customize an approach for you in terms of the issues that are important to you, whether or not it's making having a savings, having a budget, or even improving your own credit. So they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And I know that TAP, you work with people and you help people with their taxes and things like that. Yes. And, uh, the, some of the people that you work with, Annette, are they just not really that familiar with financial institutions? Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I would just say, again, this goes back to what resources are available. And so we are helping people access the tax credits that are available for them um, and also, you know, get money without having to pay a loan to get it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically the tax clinic is there as another means of helping people get the money that they deserve and be able to spend it according to what they need. Mm. Just a couple minutes left, I, I'm going to ask a couple of philosophical questions. One of them is, does the average person living comfortably understand how a family living out or below the poverty line mm -hmm. means that the economy is not at full potential and that resources have to be diverted to help these people? Do you think the average person that maybe you want to sign up for an employee campaign or make a donation. Do they really understand this? I think the pandemic has given us a glimpse of mm -hmm. that. And I hope that we don't forget that lesson, right? That in the face of an emergency or something that's wide scale like that, people are vulnerable. And there is more than 40% of us in this community that fall in that category. You don't have to be considered the poor you'd in be order be to be struggling. Family. Yes, you can be working, but you're not earning enough, and you're really working really hard, mm -hmm. but you're still not making enough. Mm -hmm. We're making progress. So did you, are there metrics and measurables, Annette, that you can say, we're making progress, we're getting more people off the streets, we're getting more people into apartments, into jobs, good jobs. Are, are we making progress? I think we're making progress, most definitely. Uh, we're changing lives and people are feeling better about the future uh, once we are helping them to, to access all of those resources that are available. And definitely, I mean, the community has come together. 
Um, I commend United Way and Abby's leadership with bringing partners and bringing people from municipalities and the state together during the pandemic. It just demonstrated how people in our community work together mm -hmm. to solve problems. Yes. We're making progress. We have uh, a further steps to make, uh, more mm -hmm. steps to take in order to make more progress but it's, 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 it's going very well at right. this time. Mm -hmm. Abby, less than a minute, are we making progress in the United Way when you look at the metrics? Oh, absolutely. I think the fact that we're working better together, being smart about those investments, and looking at root causes, that's really a game changer. Yeah, this is almost like a board meeting right here. Yeah. <laughs> Abby Hamilton with United Way of Roanoke Valley and Annette Lewis with TAP, Total Action for Progress. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks thank so much. Thank you. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters. Have a good day. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.